Whatever you do, don't call Dungog up there in the Hunter Valley a one-horse town. In fact, it's a one-cinema town, boasting the oldest still-functioning purpose-built cinema in Australia. So what better place to hold a film festival celebrating nothing but Australian film? Fenella went there and put her gumboots on. In a couple of hours' time, this theatre here is going to be packed with people. It's the Dungog Film Festival, of course. And not only will this place be packed, but literally the entire town comes out for the Dungog Film Festival. You know, everybody's got a poster on their doors and on their windows throughout the entire town. These guys are even, um, well, they're going to come too. Aren't you? OK, well, we'll talk to them later. All right. <laughs> But what's happening here is the opening night, obviously. And that's why everybody's done up in their best bib and tuckers. And the whole weekend is just magic. It's important for Dungog because it, it, it's showcasing the, the small country town that it is. That when we've got all this, this, this talent here, we've got this magnificent place here. Alana Zitzerman set up the festival over three years ago with the aim to create a kind of low-key Australian version of Sundance or Cam. Both festivals noteworthy for happening outside a major city. But in Dungog's case, it's purely about Australian films, including premieres, script readings, classic Australian cinema and shorts. Dungog is two and a half to three hours north of Sydney in the Lower Hunter Valley. It's at the foothills of the World Heritage Barrington Tops, so it is the most spectacular town. It's basically like it was back in the 1900s. The buildings have been restored and there's a real pride to the culture and to the heritage that is Australian here. So it's a perfect setting for a film festival that celebrates 100% Australian film. The opening night film was Stone Brothers by Richard Franklin. I believe it's the first Indigenous feature comedy written and directed by an Indigenous person. And basically the storyline is uh, two Koori guys or two Aboriginal guys pre-roll 187 joints, set off on a journey to deliver a special rock home to an uncle, pick up an Aboriginal transvestite and a heavy metal Italian rock god. <laughs> and they also get pursued by a, a woman of magic. Screening here for me at Dungog is, is really important. It means a lot because it's an all-Australian film festival. And, you know, the, the regions need economic support at the moment, but we also need to uh, cult cultivate our artists in the regions. And not only that, the festival has helped films that may not have had much of a chance to find an audience. In particular, in Dungog's first year, The Jammed became a runaway success after being screened at the festival. It was completely struggling and having our first screening here at the Dungog Film Festival actually gave the film, um, well it really gen generated positive buzz for the film so it really contributed to its overall success. Director Ray Lawrence, who was in town to present a screening of his classic 1985 film, Bliss Agrees. If you've got a film in release, just about to be released, then this would be a good place to do it. Because um, it's out of the main mainstream and uh, it yeah, might be a bit nicer to you. Audiences love Australian films. They love hearing our, our own voices, but the, sometimes they just don't know the Australian films are out there, and sometimes it's just, you know, it's about really putting the same kind of passion you put into making a film in getting it out to its audiences. What do you think about the film festival in Dungog? Very good. Um, I hope they don't come to the stage of overpowering the town, but uh, I think the locals are beginning to understand that it's here. Do you actually go to it? Are you interested in it yourself? Well, to be truthful, I am too busy. I've got this this morning. Tomorrow afternoon I'm selling biscuits for the Lioness Club. I've got church on Sunday morning and then on Sunday night we're serving dinner over at the showground. So, I'm not going to have a real lot of time to go anywhere. So the film festival's keeping you busy? Yes. Yeah. What, what's the best seller then? Here? Yeah. Um, my little carpet.
Yes, it's a very sunny day here in Dungog, but you know, it doesn't really matter that it's raining because the idea at a film festival is to go inside and to watch films. And every venue in town, I've got to say, is being used for the festival. And this is a church hall. And today it's all about a script reading. Um, you promised me you wouldn't gamble anymore. I got I gave up betting on horses and greyhounds, no animals. But we live in a Jonathan Worsley is yet to make his first feature film, but he brought along his screenplay titled Coming of Age to the festival, where professional actors, including Bruce Spence and Janine Drynan, were on hand to read it out to a very appreciative audience. And I love listening to what other actors can bring to the process. And it's just interesting. You, you imagine the character as one way, but then it's read out by an actor in a slightly different way. And it just brings a whole different dimension and different ideas to it. But overall, it's an incredibly important thing to have an all-Australian film festival. And hey, one day, Dungog really could be our own little Sundance. There's a real heart to it. I mean, even though there are great festivals around the world, but there's so much marketplace activity, so much is about sales, so much is about the next thing, so much is about business. And this is about today, what we're screening. This is about the movies we have, this is about the movies we're making. I think Australians are really hungry to, to watch and hear about Australian stories, absolutely. I think it's great, because it gives, like, the world may be an opportunity to see Dungo. It's just a great atmosphere, like everyone's really happy and excited to see all the movies. There you go, Fenella. Dungog, from a place you've never heard of to a film festival you'll never forget. And do you know, after the opening night film, Stone Brothers, which I, I was laughing all the way through, yes. uh, everybody was piled onto buses, you know, over 700 people almost, and off to a, basically a barn or a massive kind of tough hall that was put up. And there was That's a way to do it. It was a sit down dinner yeah, oh, well, for all those people. What do you need? What do you need? Tent, food, a couple of beers, and, and some film. film lovers. There yes. you go. <laughs>